everyone, welcome to the YGLE's first live stream. And today I'm glad to have everyone here and I hope we're going to have some, some good discussion about online teaching. And um, let's get started. <laughs> so my name is Shelby and I am an online English teacher. I have been working for YGLE since November last year and I have been enjoying it. It has been quite an adventure, I must admit. <laughs> so YJOE as a company, I'm just gonna start talking about things like this. And as soon as you have any comments, feel free to put them there. All right, so YJOE as a company, um, it took on a fairly new approach in my view to teaching online. I heard of when I heard of teaching online and I wanted to try it and I start getting re started getting ready for it. There were many different companies I had heard of, mostly teaching one on one or perhaps one with a few different um, students. But then YJE contacted me and they were saying that they want to, wanted us to teach groups of children, 20 to 30 students at a time in one classroom and I was like no ways <laughs> that's very intimidating <laughs> but um, I decided to try apply anyway and let them decide if I could do it and uh, through training and a lot of support and a group of amazing teachers to get ideas from um, it did work out and it's been a huge learning experience for me and it's actually not as bad as you think it is. It can be quite enjoyable to be able to have an actual class experience with children on the other side of the world. All right, so uh, I am going to start by telling you also about, uh, I'll do it just now, but a reward system for the World Cup. And Feel free to ask any questions if you have any questions. Hey, I see people saying hello. Hey, Samuel, Andrea, Giovanna. Hello, Giovanna. <laughs> it's great to see you all. If you guys like, you can even comment where you're from so we can see where everybody is streaming from. That'll be great. All right, so I am currently in South Africa. So we can start with that. And then as you guys add your comments, we can see where all in the world everyone is. All right, so, and I'm sure many of the teachers at YGLE can agree, would agree with me that this, um, through the training and, and all the help we get, we really have, hey Serbia, <laughs> we really have had a, a great growing and learning experience. And um, so with online teaching, it's been very rewarding. You especially if you enjoy travel and learning about other cultures, you really do get to travel the world in a sense and learn about the world without even leaving your home. Was it easy to get there? I'll admit, starting online teaching was not as easy as I thought it would be. It takes a lot of work, hard work and patience and persistence, but is it worth it? Personally, I'd say yes, it has been definitely worth it. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Charmaine and Stephanie from Bosnia. Hello, Jelana. You're at Paris. Cool. Hello, everyone. Yes. Hungary. Awesome. Hello. Greetings to all around the world. <laughs> okay. So um, another thing I'd like to talk about is the applying process. So when I first started applying, Beijing, ah, from China, Giovanna. <laughs> when I first started applying to teach online, I applied to many, many, many different companies. But um, if you're considering teaching online, I would say that uh, definitely a good start is to try look through as many companies as possible and try and find a company that will seems that they will really suit your needs and that is what YGL you did for me so uh, thanks everyone oh from Venezuela 
Right, so when you apply, a few tips for applying. Make sure that you go all out in your demo. It's going to feel a bit strange teaching uh, adults <laughs> like they're a child, but really the more outgoing and enthusiastic you can be, the better. That's my number one tip for applying is to just go for it. Don't be afraid. You can conquer the challenges as they come. Okay, so love from India. Cool. From Albania. Hello, Jovan. Oh, it's so cool to, good to see all you guys through pictures. All right. Currently teaching in Beijing from Venezuela. And this is also a great part of teaching online. We are in touch with people from all around the world. So it's quite exciting. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go into discussing the reward system idea I had. And please, if you guys have any questions about what it's like to be an online teacher and what um, questions you have about teaching or YJOE or anything like that, feel free to ask. Hello from uh, my demo friend, Jelana and Candace from South Africa. Hello, Candace. <laughs> cool. Okay, so with the World Cup here, obviously we know that the World Cup is a very, it's a worldwide, it's the World Cup. <laughs> Everyone knows about it. Everyone gets involved and in, into it and wants to watch and know what's going on. And um, so it's a part of world culture. And a part of the reason that the Chinese want to use foreign teachers is they want to be in touch with the world culture, the culture around um, English teaching, and the English language, sorry, and the people who speak use the English language. So it's always good to bring in things like that into our classes, give them a bit of cultural education too. So with the World Cup, um, obviously, it's uh, world soccer being a very popular sport. Um, I have thought of an idea that we can use to score our students, to reward them. So with one-on-one, -on -one, this can be slightly adjusted to use on one-on-one, -on -one, but this idea is more catered towards group classes. So I often use group competition just encourages the student to, if they're a bit shy, it makes them want to answer a bit more. So it's a bit more interactive and it gets them more involved in the class. So uh, I always enjoy using group competition, but when I score them, I try not to make the difference too far apart. Keep it encouraging, not discouraging. So what you can do is split the class in two teams. You could split them down the middle, group A, group B, maybe red team, blue team, or boys versus girls. All right. Okay, wait, I see. Pause on that. I have a question. Um, are the classes ongoing all year, or it has peaks like when the students are on? Yes, yes. Uh, so far, in my experience, it is ongoing all year with breaks. There are peaks, obviously, with the summer semester that just started. Huge amounts of classes, like it, your schedule gets full, full, full. But then, say, the week just before summer semester started, there were very little, but there were still classes. So it's steady, but also, obviously, some sometimes you'll get a whole lot more and sometimes not too many. So yes, that is, who is that from? That was from Katsi. Katina, Katina, thanks for your question. All right, and Tanish, I don't know how to say that. Tanish, that's a cool name. <laughs> um, guide on how we can be part of online English teaching. All right, so to be an online English teacher, there's a few requirements, but if you want, I put the link for specifically YJOE, um, their requirements for online teachers. But I'd recommend you get a TEFL course or a TEFL certificate 
from, there's a large variety of companies who do that. And that really gives you a good foundation for teaching English to foreigners. And once you do that, go check the other requirements. And then on the page, you'll see the link is in the description for YJOE. And then you can apply there. All right. Once you've joined, there is plenty of training. They will train you to get it right. But my advice is just be willing to be a, apply your TEFL that you learned, the knowledge, how to teach, and be super enthusiastic and energetic. All right. Uh, I saw another one. Daniela, do you use English music with the children? Yes, we do. Uh, every class we have a warmer, so we'll use different songs, like usually kids' songs, and like head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, or whatever, as long as it's simple enough for a uh, non-native speaker to learn, we use a song every lesson, or we use different warmers, but songs are used quite often. Thanks, Daniela. Uh, oh, I see Jovan answered her. Okay, cool. All right, so the soccer rewarding system. So I have girls versus boys. And this is for the more, the, the type of teacher who likes to be a bit more crafty, arts and crafty. You can make or print them out, put them on card, stick them on. <laughs> I use chopsticks. <laughs> so you get disposable chopsticks and we usually use them and I, I use them to hold up my signs because they have a flat side, which is really great. And I think it's quite funny. <laughs> anyway, I stick them on chopsticks, all my signs, I do that. And um, yeah, so you can make signs like this if you like, print them out big and also one like this, go. And then these, and you can get it all of Google, easy enough to find pictures of goals, which I printed big too, and had laminated just so this, it lasts longer. So what you can do, split them up into groups, I'd say boys and girls, but either way. And then you say, every time you answer today in class, um, you will get points for your team. And the winning team gets the trophy, wins the World Cup, woo! All right, so, uh, say you're asking, what's this? Dana, what's this color? <laughs> and they say, it. you pick the student with your screen cropping tool. And the student says, it is yellow. Then you say, wow, good job. Awesome. And then you can now, to incorporate this, you say it's a girl. You say, okay, run, 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 and kick, depending on the age. Younger ones are more willing to do silly things like that, but the older ones you could just say, and, bam, goal. Everyone say, goal. All right, and then as they go along, they can collect, print out a few of these. I just put some press stick on the back. All right, and then you see at the end, boys collect some, girls collect some. Go, go. <laughs> Woo. And at the end, the winner gets the trophy. All right, so that's the one idea I had. And now the other idea I had is quite similar, but it's for the people who aren't really into making arts and crafts. All right, I just see one question here. Uh, maybe you can answer the question. I am confused about, sorry, this is from Alex, Alexandra. <laughs> uh, I'm confused about introduction and warm up. When, sorry, when I had my introduction, two minutes. Oh, I see. Okay, maybe I can use part of it. Right, okay, so standard teaching flow for a 25 minute class is, um, they say five minutes for your introduction and warm up. Just because otherwise you spend too much time on the introduction and not enough time on the content. 
but um yes try you say uh, two minutes on your introduction okay try keep it under two minutes i found even with the kids you don't want to say too much about yourself because they lose interest or it's too much info they're not going to remember it all so i like to focus on just one thing so i'll say my favorite color is purple and then you say do you like purple what is your favorite color ask one or two students be quick about it just one thing and next time you see the same students you tell them something else my favorite food is such and such that way you're just focusing on this is my name i like this thing done and you can get straight into your warmer <laughs> all right i hope that helps alexandra yes but yeah, try keep the whole thing in five minutes. If you go slightly over five, it's not a problem, but that's the standard teaching flow guideline. Keeps us all united in our way of teaching. <laughs> all right, so then I saw, oh, I see Jovan answered too. Thank you, Jovan. 